Hello guys, welcome to another Blender script tutorial from Blender Ignite. My name is Ryan Grzyk and in this tutorial we're going to be talking about first person and third person camera moves using a camera rig script. You will see that if you click on this camera here that there's a bunch of properties that can change values. I'm hoping that these properties are very self-explanatory and that as I give you a run through it, you'll be able to jump in and get started. I did want to bring up something though. I found while searching around this mouse move script. Now a mouse move script is a little bit different than a camera rig script made by this guy right here. I really wanted to pronounce his name and I really didn't want to offend him. So I hope you guys will understand me, but um, he has made a really awesome script here. However, I did want to point out that they are different so in this tutorial here, I just wanted to create a rig that would be very easy to use and that could have a set of properties that would be very easy to understand and just convert that into any game that you're wanting. I'm going to get started and show you how this works. Now before I start, I just wanted to bring up one thing that I found and that is that the mouse cursor will appear in the game engine visibly at all times which means that in the script I have set the mouse cursor to be non-viewable during certain options. I'll take you through those, but the screen recording software will record the mouse cursor no matter which option I have set. So it's a little bit disappointing because you'll see that it jumps to the middle and moves around the center a bit, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. That is basically it. I'm just going to push play, jump in. You can see that um, the mouse cursor is visible right now. The cube here it is surrounded by an outline to make it easier for us. I can move this player around a bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click over here, grab using the left button, which means that as I move forward and rotate using the mouse, it's also moving the player object that you have attached to this cube around your scene and it just allows for a more dynamic view. Now if you click the right button, you will see that you can then rotate around the entire cube. So this means that you, while you're moving, you can rotate around it and it will not rotate the actual cube here. If you want to go back to the middle, just click the left mouse button and you'll see that it just moves back to that view. The mouse is visible during that game and it just allows you to press buttons and still interact with your character all within the same script. So that is the player mode third person. We also have another mode which you may have heard called first person and that means it just takes the camera and moves it into a view that makes it look like you are the person traveling your character. So what's actually happening is that the camera is traveling along that line there. You can see that it's parented to the cube and ending right there. You can, if you want to, if you don't like the jerk when you jump into the game, you can just take that camera and just move it closer to that cube so you can see, but I just want to show you right now. So when I push P, you can see I jump into that. You can see that I can rotate. So if I look down at that wireframe, you can see I'm rotating it, and I can also rotate within that character within the camera. So that mode means that you can do first person or third person. First person, all it is is just moving the camera to that center and what it is also doing is disabling this, these zoom features and I'll talk about that in just a little bit. In first person though, there is one other thing that most games use and that is called a free mode. What exactly is a free mode? Well, free mode, what it does is it takes the rotation. Instead of clicking and dragging, what it does is it allows the rotation of your mouse to affect the movement. And what does that mean? It means that it frees up the left and right button so that you can connect it to say a weapon or you can move it and throw a grenade. Um, and that means that also that the cursor disappears, meaning you can use an overlay say for a target and it just allows the first person mode to be a lot more dynamic. So I'm just going to enable that right now within the first person and you can just see that as I move around here, I'm not clicking down at all and it's just moving the player around. That's a pretty cool mode, also works for third person. So you can see here, same type of thing, 
the mouse cursor has disappeared. Um, so that means that you can't click on anything. I mean, it will be visible in the recording, but right now I can't see the cursor. And so that's just allowing me to move and rotate around that player. So it all depends on what game you're thinking of, you know, whether it's first person, third person, and whether that camera is moving. Coming down to the button switch, we have um, a Boolean here, so true or false. That just means that when you are not in free mode, if you're dragging with the left button, it will perform the operation of the other button. So it just switches those two up. So if you want those different within your game. And just moving down, the mouse sensitivity just determines how fast your mouse is moving within the game. You know, how fast that rotation is when you move your mouse. So if you go down to one and, you know, I'm just gonna come up here and enable free mode. So if I just push play, you'll see that the mouse is just rotating really slowly. I know it might be hard to see, but on the mouse pad, I have to travel a lot farther distance than if I did it here. And you can just see that it moves a lot faster. So that can be determined by the mouse sensitivity and the mouse angle is how far this camera rotates on the player. So what does that exactly mean? Well, here's the camera and here's the player. You will see that this camera um, can rotate any distance along here, but you can see that this mouse angle helps cap or set up a cap lock so that your camera doesn't go over to the other side and flip upside down. So that just means that this camera will stop um, at the 180 degree line or whatever angle that you've set here. In this case, I've done 170, which means there's five degrees off the top and five degrees off the bottom. So that can be changed and adjusted um, for when you hit that distance. So going back into the camera mode, we now have some zoom features. And I haven't showed you the zoom, so let me just go in. I'm just gonna push play. And you can see that I can scroll forward, zooms in, and I can zoom out up to two distances. And those are determined by the maximum distance, so how far away from the player you are, and the minimum distance, which is how close you are to this player. So that is determined by those two values, and the mouse zoom is just how fast you move between them. If it's two, it'll take smaller chunks than, say, five, and it's a float value, so you can do like 0.5 to do a lot of small motion if you want to, you know, just within the game. And that means that it's a lot smoother when you scroll. So I'll just bring that up to here. And the last option down here is called Zoom FP, which stands for Zoom First Person. And that means that if you are in third person and want to still have first person capability, it just allows you that instead of hitting this minimum distance and ending, what it does is when you select this, it hits that minimum distance and goes straight into first person view. Um, and that allows you to um, bypass any of the sort of obstruction to the camera that would happen. And so you can set this distance, say to like five, and then when you come in and zoom in, you can see that when it goes past that view, it just zooms straight into that you know, first person view. That should give you a lot of variance within your game. I'm hoping that's going to be very useful for you Hopefully they're quite self-explanatory and that there's still a lot of variety that you can use within your game. So now that I've showed you the camera rig, I want to show you um, how this would be used with a character. Up here in the outliner, I have this character. You can see that it is um, hidden. I'm just going to turn it on right here and turn it on in the rendering. I'm just going to rotate around this character here. And you can see that it's made up of a few different parts. One, you can see that there's objects here and they are parented to this armature here that I've set up. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to build this character. If you just search for it on Google, you should find some tutorials of how to set that up. And all I've done is really just parented to this armature and have created very simple little bit of a walk cycle so that you could see this in the game engine, have taken this armature and just parented it to this bounding box or player. And so that way, as the player moves, this character follows it, and then the walk cycle looks like it's walking. All I've done is just applied a keyboard and an action just to get those moving when I go forward. 
and I'm just going to show you how this works in the game. So I'm just going to come into the camera mode. I'm just going to flip over to third person take off free mode and I'm just going to show you how this works. I'm going to just push play and what you're going to see is that this bounding box is still that outline but we don't want that because now we have a character so we're just going to click on that box go under the material settings up here scroll down and click invisible and that way when we push play it all disappears and, we, and it will act normally so what can I do I can move forward you can see that it's walking and you can see I can rotate up I can jump back to that front view and you know just rotate the object using the mouse and it's just walking forward using that um, using a bit of that walk cycle and so I can watch it walking and then spin around to the front and spin back and just rotate it around and so it's quite versatile you can do a lot of things I can zoom in into first person mode you can see that here so now that I am the character zoom out and I can have a really top view of the character. So many options, so many things. I hope you guys are just looking out and seeing if there's anything that you can see that would be useful for your game. I'm going to hopefully be adding some more features to this later on, so I'm pretty excited. So that's it for the character. You can see that it is applied. Um, just really quick feature, when you append this to your scene later on, you're going to see that this um, cube is quite a bit taller. I'm just going to hide this character really quick. And you're also going to see that this empty is quite a bit higher. And this is done just by clicking on this circle, just grabbing it and just moving it up. And you can see that the camera and the two empties follow it. And once it travels into the center of the character, the camera, you'll see that because these faces are only one-sided, your camera can see out. The one other thing I just wanted to show you is that the way this camera is rotating using the mouse is set up by just rotating each of these empties in a very different way. But that means because they are all parented to each other, we now have the opportunity to create a little bit more organic motion. And so I can use it by just clicking on this empty, going over to the object settings, scrolling down to relationship extras panel, and to slow parent and selecting that and just adding in a bit of an offset the movement will not be so rigid and just a bit smoother um, for when you're in the game it might be hard to see in the recording but it just means that now my player is spinning a little bit ahead of my camera and it's just creating a lot more smoother movement with that so it's not as harsh within the character so that's a very cool feature and will really add a lot to your game. So that is basically it for that camera script. So I'm just going to show you in the next section how to append this to your scene and just show you how easy it is to set it up for your game. Alright guys, we have the blank scene open before us. We have the plane and the light and we're going to just append that camera rig into our scene. Now before we do that, we're going to have to download the file from Blender Ignite. The link is included in the description below, or you can just go to Blender Ignite and download it from there. And then once you have the file downloaded, we're just gonna to navigate to it. So we're gonna go File, Append, you know, search for the camera rig, and open that up. And under Group, we're gonna select camera rig and then go link and append and you'll see that it brings in that whole setup here and all we have to do is come under the camera if it's not selected and hold down control numpad zero so now that we're in the camera you'll see that um, all the modes are here and the rig is all set up so the only thing left we have to do is bring in this camera rig script so we go under text, open text block, navigate to the scripts, and open the camera rig.python script. Open that up and you will see that we have the camera rig script here. So right now if we just select that material, go down to the materials for it, go down to invisible and uncheck that, 
can see that we can push play and we can rotate and we are good to go. Now, I'm going to just make that invisible. We're going to now bring in the character from the other blend file or whatever character that you have. So we're gonna go under file, append. It's still in the same place, so character two. Link and append that in. If you see that nothing is there, just by pushing the I and the render here, and you can see that it appear here. Now, what you'll find is that if this moves here, everything else moves, but not this character. So take the armature here and select the player object, push control P, parent to object, test it, and you're good to go. Now there is no movement, remember, because the movement here is another script, and if you want, you can copy it or create your new movement. So you can do that by going under, um, just creating a new text block, copying this, pasting it here, taking this the run off and go PY here, and then just navigate to the other Blender file, go down to the Movement 2 script, select it here, push Control A, select it all, copy, and then navigate back to the Blender file, and push Control V, just paste that in. And so now, when you push play, you'll see that your character will move, and if we go into the camera view, you can see that we can now move, and we can now rotate the player around, we can now you know, spin around it, and under the camera, all the properties are set up and ready to go. That's pretty much it from our end. Please subscribe if you want to be open for any updates with Blender Ignite or any more script tutorials. Thanks for watching. My name is Ryan Grizziak, and I will see you next time.